So folks, this is one of the things that just drives me nuts about Donald Trump. Okay, so we know that he said Milwaukee was a horrible city. I mean, there were people in the room. We know that he said that, but yet he comes out with a tweet just an hour ago, and he says the Democrats are making up stories that I said Milwaukee is a horrible city. This is false, a complete lie, just like the laptop for Mel was a lie. <laughs> and then, of course, he just kept going and going and going and going. And what I don't like about him is that he's incredibly unstable. I mean, just to put it lightly. So he just tweeted that, and that's on the heels of him just saying this. I think it was very clear what I meant. I said we're very concerned with crime. I love Milwaukee. I have great friends in Milwaukee. But it's, as you know, the crime numbers are terrible, and we have to be very careful. But I was referring to also the election. <laughs> so, I mean, he just he just said that he said it. And then he just tweeted out. I mean, do, do you see what I'm talking about here? I mean, and this man is supposed to be running for office and potentially a second term. I mean, it's... Um, does anybody... I mean, do, I, I know that the MAGA people are never going to see things like I see them, even after I just explained this to you. But... Um, let just let it sink in. All right. Give it give it a little time. Let it marinate. Let it marinate. And folks, then I want to talk about this, the the Kevin Leary thing. You know, Kevin Leary came out and said Donald Trump's VP pick, Doug Burgum, is an awesome guy. Awesome guy. I don't know. Um, the problem that I have with Doug Burgum being an awesome guy for Trump's VP pick is that you, Kevin Leary, are recommending him. So here's what he said about Doug Burgum, folks. Burgum is not a mistake. Burgum could be the get it done guy. You know, Trump is bombastic. He's the vision guy. But he needs execution skills. He could say to Burgum, go fix the border, go fix energy, go fix anything. That's what Burgum does. I don't see that skill set proven in any other candidate. So I'm, I'm unabashedly supporting someone I know in business as a phenomenal leader. So he's kind of putting himself out as a guy who knows his stuff, right? Shark Tank, all this kind of stuff. You could tell Doug Burgum, go fix it, go fix this. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll fix anything that you want. Will he fix FTX, Kevin O'Leary? You were a paid spokesman for FTX. And mm, I don't know. That just, uh, there's something not quite right about that. I don't think he's, the, the public is aware that he was a paid spokesperson for that scam FTX. And how much did he make? Well, I've got a clip that'll show you, but it was about $15 million. And from what I can tell, folks, he spent 15 million, or he spent almost 9.7 million in crap crypto at the exchange, and he spent another million dollars in equity. Um, so he's down about 10.7 million. They paid him 15. So here he is, folks. He's talking about how this was a bad investment. You know, feel bad for me. I lost it. All that. No, you came out four million ahead. Right. And in your promotion of what was ultimately a scam, folks. How do I get a piece of this deal? And I said at that time, I am a paid spokesperson. I cannot bring you as an, in as an LP. Not a single dollar that I lost is anybody else's money except mine. That's important for me oh, because that's an issue. How much were you paid? So Total deal was just under $15 million mm -hmm. all in, including uh, a bunch of uh, agents and, uh, that I had to pay because oh, I needed had to. SAG after release to be mm -hmm. able to do commercials for it. And when I did that, I put about $9.7 million into crypto. Uh, I think that's what I've lost. It's all at zero. I don't know because my account got scraped a couple of weeks ago. Know. All the data, all the coins, everything. Oh. So. And then I lost the money I invested in the equity as well. Those are those are zeros too. Mm. It was not a good investment, Andrew. Okay, I don't make right. great investments all the time. Luckily, I make more good ones than bad ones, but that was a bad one. Okay, let me ask you this though: um, when you better. made this arrangement, this is back in August tenth, two thousand twenty-one. Yeah, you said the following: you said to find crypto investment opportunities that met my own rigorous standards. That was your phrase of compliance. 
I entered into this relationship with FTX. It has some of the best crypto exchange offerings I've seen on the market. Yes. Even that you are the, were the spokesman and ambassador for this company. Yes. yes because what we, kind of diligence did you do yes. around this issue of compliance? Yes. Tell us. Given where we sit well, today. Well, I, I obviously know all the institutional investors in this deal. We, oh. we all look like idiots. Let's put that on the table, okay? It's not we just, relied on each other's due him. diligence, but we also relied on another investment theme that I felt drove a lot of interest in FTX. Sam Bankman Fried is an American. His parents are American compliance lawyers. Oh. There were no other. There you go. What more do you need, folks? So he did no due diligence. He just took the money. <laughs> the 15 million, he just gobbled it up. And as like I said, from what I can tell here, he, he spent 9.7 in crap crypto and about a million dollars in equity. So he's still making money, right? Promoting something that was ultimately a freaking scam. Um, so no, um, I'm sorry. I, I don't think that Doug Burgum is uh, as good a guy as you're making him out to be in a fixer. Mm, no, no, thank you. And then folks, there's... There's something that's still bugging me about this whole tax thing that Donald Trump, he started off, follow, follow with me on this, he started off in Vegas and he told the people in Vegas that afternoon that if he's elected, you're not going to have to pay taxes on tips, right? Okay, a couple of days later, he ends up in Washington, D.C. And then in Washington, D.C., he told everybody that I'm going to impose tariffs on everything so that we won't have any income tax. Um, help me understand what the hell happened between the drive from Vegas, where it was just tips, to Washington, D.C., where now everything's going to be, we're going to fund the government on tariffs, supposedly, which, of course, that's not going to be inflationary, right? We just put a tariff on everything coming into the United States. No, there's no way that that's going to be inflationary. So how did it go from Vegas, just tips, to Washington, D.C., tariffs, and, and no income taxes? I mean, really? Really? Um, and, and who did you consult? Did you just pull that out of your ass? You know, maybe at, at a pit stop at a McDonald's or something. Yeah, I, I, I got an idea. This is what we're... No, really. I mean, how how in the hell did, did it happen? I mean, how, how, how did you get there? And yeah, I think you did just pull that one out, you know. And folks, there were business people in the room in Washington... And here's what Andrew Ross Sorkin said about that. Have a listen. I will say I was surprised. I spoke to a number of CEOs who I would say walked into the meeting being Trump supporter-ish or thinking that they might be leaning that direction, who said that he was remarkably meandering, uh, could not keep a straight thought, was all over the map. Rambling Don. That they, which may be not surprising, but was interesting to me because these were people who I think might have been actually predisposed to him and actually walked out of the room less predisposed really? to him, actually predisposed to thinking this is not necessarily, as one person said, this may not be any different or better. You know, I can't wait to hear from the economists out there on this. So we're supposed to make the whole government work on tariffs? Uh, and, and no, that that's that's that is such an abysmal idea that is like the voyage of the Titanic, folks. I mean, it will it will throw the U.S. economy into a recession. It will throw the stock market into a tailspin, and you know we're going to have to have what government employees out picking up aluminum cans on the interstate to try to meet the budget. Um, and 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 like I said. And the whole thing with terrorists, it's not going to be inflationary. I mean, come on, folks. I mean, for those of you who are MAGA specific, I mean, come on. Uh, do, you, do you get the insanity that's going on here? The Do you see the trouble 
with the trip from Vegas to Washington, D.C., and then all of a sudden this, this idea sprouted. And you know what else they said? The business people that were in the room with Donald Trump in Washington, D.C., one of them asked him, this was on MSNBC, which I don't have a clip of, but one of the, and these are prominent business people, one of them said, Mr. President, right now the corporate tax is at 21%. You want to take it to 20 How did you get to that idea? I just thought it was a nice round number. Okay, yeah. No wonder they're walking out of the room, scratching their head like, oh my God, where is he going to take us next? Folks, this man's a nightmare. Seriously. Trump is a freaking nightmare, and he's going to end up destroying this country if we let him. Till next time.